was heading back to Guelph where I was finishing my studies. And um, in the midst of that storm, um, my car hit a patch of ice. And the last thing I remember seeing were the headlights of an oncoming car. And then after that, I, I, uh, I lost consciousness. But that car impacted me on the driver's side. Uh, miraculously, I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. I got ejected um, through the, the window of the driver's side door of the car. And uh, when I regained consciousness briefly, I was lying in a snowdrift in a ditch. And it was a miracle. God, God uh, uh, protected uh, me that night. Now, a witness said he saw you flip and hit the ground a couple of times before finally landing yeah, in a snowdrift. Yeah, it was drift. a gentleman sh shoveling snow at the end of his driveway. He read about the accident in the newspaper the next day. And, and uh, then he, when I was out of intensive care, he said, I, I want to go and, and, and see her. I want to tell her my story. And he said, I literally, Sylvia, I literally saw you bounce off the pavement twice before before you landed in my side of the ditch. So it was a miracle that I, I survived the accident. What were your uh, injuries from the accident? Um, I had a, a, a significant head injury and then because of the impact on the pavement, uh, muscular, uh, some muscular damage and uh, a lot of stitches, multiple stitches. So how did that affect your, your running and, and your career? Yeah, in retrospect, like I, I was out for two and a half years and uh, went back to training in the pool and, and God, um, uh, you know what? He allowed me the privilege to, to race again. I qualified for the 1988 team, but just a few weeks before the games, I got injured, so co I couldn't go. The same thing happened in 1992. I continued to train through with that dream because there was a Part B on that note mm. to win a medal for Canada, and I really believed after 84 that I wanted to go back and see mm. that part achieved. But in retrospect, the accident put a bit of a tailspin on my career because it was always difficult for me after that to... Um, train at that intensity yeah. um, and I would just about be ready and then I would break down with injuries. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I ended my career uh, not being able to achieve that, that second part. But even that, I look back in retrospect and I think, wow, you know what, God, sometimes um, we, we see um, the dream that God has given us and we anticipate that it's going to happen a certain way, that he is going to get the glory mm -hmm. in a certain way. And he's so faithful, even though it doesn't happen yeah. in the way we mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. he does bring it to pass. He's so faithful. Yeah. And he's, he's brought you into a, a new path yes. and uh, some new things that you're mm -hmm. involved with now. And in the, the time remaining, I, I'm excited about, about yes. what, what you're doing mm -hmm. with, with kids. And it, just tell us about that. Yeah. Well, you know, when I retired and I kept training through to the 1996 Olympics, uh, just a few months before the games, I retired from the sport and was there was a disappointment there uh, because I hadn't had a chance to go back and believe to, to achieve that, you know, mm -hmm. see God, I want to do this. You've given me the talent, the ability for your glory. But I he heard him ask the question at the end of all of those 20 years of my career, the number one question he was asking me was not, Sylvie, how many medals have you won for me? What have you achieved for me? His question for me was much like Peter on the the seashore breakfast, Sylvia, do you love me? Mm. Do you love me? Do you love me? And my answer was, you know that I love you. And so my prayer was, um, God, you know my heart. You're my lover. You're my savior. Will you show me your heart? This part of my life is done. What, what's ahead? Will you show me your heart? And when I retired and moved back to, to Toronto, I was living in an area surrounded by housing developments and was attending a church there. And I got to know children who were coming from the housing projects. And I would see them coming to the church wearing their summer sandals in the middle of winter. And so I, I would drive them home and I got to know them and saw poverty for the first time. As a Canadian, as an Olympian, I'd often said, I love Canada and I do love Canada, but I believe that everyone in Canada had a chance to do and be what they wanted to do and be. So I, I met poverty really for the first time at a very deep level. And so this prayer that I was praying, God, I, you know my heart, show me your heart. My burden for the kids, these children that I had gotten to know got greater. So I'd be up, up at night, two, three in the morning, and I'd be crying out. And the verse that, got, that, that was pressing on my heart is found in Lamentations 2.19 and it says Arise, cry out in the night as the watches of the night begin. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands mm -hmm. to him for the lives of your children who are fainting from hunger at the head of every street. And I said, God, what is this? <clears throat> and one day I heard him uh, whisper so clearly to me, Sylvia, you asked me to show you my heart. I'm showing you my heart. 
It's the children that are on my heart. And then it was like, wow, because what I had seen happen in these communities of poverty is these children at age 9 and 10 were giving up. It was like a light went out, like a window shut. And I kept saying, what is that? What's this change I, I see in these children? And one day it struck me, God downloaded it into my spirit. Sylvie, that's hope, and it just left. And so it was at that time I said, I've got to do something. I can't stand back. I met Brian Warren, uh, the founder of a national children's charity called Start to Finish. And Brian said to me when I shared um, that I had to do something, I saw hope leaving. He said, have you ever thought of using your running background as a means to connect with these children? And it was very interesting because, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but I realized God is a perfect steward of our lives. He uses everything. And I kind of thought, okay, my running career is done. Okay, now what's next? And he's mm -hmm. saying, no, no, no. <laughs> so when Brian said, have you ever thought of using your running background? I was like, no, but you know what? I see these kids, they don't have opportunity for physical activity, for exercise. They've got all this emotion, frustration bound up. So we said, okay, let's, if hope is leaving, what does hope look like? So Brian and I were talking about it. Let's bring running. Let's give them a chance to expend that frustration and energy. Then we saw a statistic about how far behind in literacy these children are who live in communities of poverty, way behind in literacy. So they go to school and they fear books because they're behind and who of us gravitates towards something we don't do well. We said, let's bring literacy. And then we said, let's bring men and women, mentors, role models. Mm -hmm. So we started in 2004 with one school in Toronto. We said, let's bring a running and reading club and let's see if we can't keep hope alive by bringing opportunity and, and resources and mm -hmm. people into and their as lives. As you're talking about it, we're gonna see some, some footage yes. of the running and reading club. Yes. And, and we'll see uh, kids there out there. Go. There they, they are. We, we have uh, 28, uh, we're in, coast to coast in 28 communities across the nation with these running and reading clubs. We're seeing profound change in the lives of these kids as they work towards their year and five kilometer run. They're learning courage, perseverance, uh, you know, teamwork, their self-confidence, and that's translating into other areas of their life. And what we're, we're, we're able to do through the running and reading club is keep hope alive and really be God's distribution channels of love, of hope, of encouragement, of grace and we're seeing these kids flourish in schools they they get this medal around their neck and a switch goes off in their mind that yeah. says i do have what it takes yeah. i can yeah. make it yeah. and uh, they're encouraged wow. uh, to yeah. keep uh, to keep moving forward in their lives and we're seeing great success that's wonderful, Beautiful. Sylvia. I love yeah. your, your Olympic spirit is contagious, and you're yeah. sharing it now with the next generation. God bless you, Absolutely. Sylvia. And the, yes. the, the and website is, is start, the number two, start to finish online. uh, online.org. Org, yes. All right, if All right. people want more information. Yes. Sylvia, thank you for sharing thank your you. story yes. and you what for, you're doing now. Yeah. God bless yeah. you in yeah. your ongoing you. pursuits for him. Absolutely. Thank you.